This is Tim Norman from Welcome to Sweetie Pies on the Open Winfrey Network, and I'm here with Inspire. Juan, this is Inspire Magazine, and we're here with Tim Norman from OWN's Welcome to Sweetie Pies. He's in New York City, and he took some time out to tell us what's going on with the new season, and I hear we have a new cookbook coming along, too. Absolutely. We have the new the cookbook is out. It's been out, and um, you know what? We just received word that we passed up Paula Dane's last cookbook, oh, wow. so that's a feat within itself. So check out the Sweetie Pies cookbook. Definitely. Congratulations on that. Um, so tell us, what's happening this new season? What can we look forward to? What can we expect? Um, you know what? One thing you can um, see differently with this season, uh, people that watch the show, you're used to seeing the show primarily focus on the family, which is myself, my mother, my son, my son's mother. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to see a bunch of people moving from St. Louis to L.A., which which entails the workers. So you're going to see a little bit more of the staff, I mean, a couple of the cooks, managers, cousin Charles is there, but them... Uh, moving from St. Louis to the country, you know, being some kind of country folks, <laughs> moving on down, uh, moving over to, to Los Angeles right. to deal with all the, you know, the Los Angeles glam and living with each other, too. So it's kind of a, kind of Beverly Hills, Billy's type of story going oh, on. Oh, wow. That's going to be an adjustment, it's isn't an it? Adjustment. <laughs> yeah. So I know you were talking about, you know, uh, previous seasons. It's, you know, we, we definitely get a good look into your family. Mm -hmm. Um, what advice uh, would you have as a man, because mm -hmm. we don't see too many men on TV balancing family and work and being successful at it, what advice would you have regarding the growth of entrepreneurship and being able to balance family and life? Well, you know what, I, I, I don't know if I'm a, a good person to ask that because, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm doing great with the business part, but sometimes it's very hard with the family aspect of it. Mm -hmm. uh, because uh, one thing I'm lucky about, my mother is in the business with me, so she gets it. Mm -hmm. uh, before as uh, my son's mother, um, we had a lot of uh, you know disagreements on how right. things should be uh, handled, and uh, maybe she felt I took the business a little too serious, and I was trying to go a little too hard in the paint with it. So um, that didn't work out. But mm -hmm. to answer your question, there is some there is some type of balance between family and, and work. Um, everybody's situation is a little different. Um, but I think everyone should realize that when you have opportunities, you should capitalize on those opportunities while they present themselves. Mm -hmm. Because um, you don't want to wait till it's too late and say, wish I, I would have went harder when I had the chance. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. I know you also mentioned um, your personal family situation. What advice do you have for those who are co-parenting? And, you know, so, like, we, it's, it's just a normal thing going yeah. on right now. Yeah. And you're pretty much on TV. And, yeah. you know, it, it goes to show other people other examples of how you can co-parent, even if you both don't agree. Um, what advice would you have about co-parenting and coming to an agreement on, you know, the betterment of your own child? Yeah, I mean, co-parenting is, is a new norm nowadays, you mm -hmm. know. Um, I think that whoever you are, I think you should always make sure your child's uh, best welfare and best interests always, always comes before um, the parents and their feelings towards each other, whatever happened. You know, this person, you know, you, it's all about the kid. Mm -hmm. um, my son is back in St. Louis right now with uh, with his mother and the rest of my family, and I'm primarily out in L.A. right now. So I'm in St. Louis a lot. Um, I go back and I see him every chance I get. Um, but it's, it's very hard to co-parent when I'm myself. I'm in a different state. Mm -hmm. um, so then, then a lot of people are in the situations, you know, they're, they're different states and different cities from their, uh, from their children. But you have to uh, try to be there as much as possible, you know, and work it out with the, uh, your, your mate or the, the other, other ex-half you know, <laughs> as much as possible. Work it out for the, for the child's benefits so you can be in your child's life. All right, definitely. And also, uh, we definitely want to commend you. You're, you're using your platform to not only, you know, you're showing your personal life and you're mm -hmm. giving examples of how you're living your personal life, but you're also giving examples of how not to deal with your past or how to put your past behind you. And uh, you do a lot of work with, um, you know, ex cop people coming out of prison mm -hmm. trying to get their life back together because that's basically happened to you. Yeah. Um, so tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, and I to say that's another you know, new norm. You know, there are a lot of uh, a lot of people that have that come from um, you know uh, incarceration, mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times when you're away, you don't they don't really prepare you for being released or prepare you for life out on the streets. You know, uh, so a lot of people that have not been in a situation don't realize how hard it is for a person to get a job with that felony on the record, or even to get an apartment. You know, now mm -hmm. you can't get an apartment with a felony in your jacket. Um, and one of the reasons, one of the main ways we came about helping so many people with sweet pies, when I first came on my road in college, uh, I was trying to do my own thing. I tried to go to Home Depot, tried to go to McDonald's, the Burger King, mm -hmm. the Walmarts. No one would hire me, even though um, all outward appearances, you know, I walked, I walked straight, I talked, you know, I right. talked pretty decent. Um, I carried myself pretty decent, I, I, I think. 
Mm -hmm. Um, So I would appear to be a a hireable young man, but once they did the background check, even though something that happened back when I was 17, you know, 10 years ago, in my case at the time, Mm -hmm. they they won't give you a chance. So uh, us as Sweetie Pies, we we turn the other cheek when it comes to that. We don't do the the average background checks, and we don't scrutinize people for their past because Mm -hmm. everyone has a past, and I don't think that should be. Um, your past should not, you know, dictate your present all the time. You know, and if you want to work, uh, we we give you that opportunity to work. You know, we we're gonna let your 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 present and how you carry yourself now dictate what your future is gonna be with us. Yeah, I think that's amazing because, like you said, not too many businesses do that, and right. everybody does. People make mistakes. No one's Absolutely. perfect, you know. And I think that's a great example to set. It'll you know give people a little bit more courage trying right. to move forward if they know that they do have those type of opportunities so i mean you have no idea even with me being in la here is i've been my i'm, I'm 30 i'm in my 30s right now i can mm-hmm. tell you everything <laughs> but my um my crime happened um uh, about 20 years ago mm. and even with me being in la uh, even my, my financial situation is uh much it's, it's a great financial situation right now mm-hmm. i cannot go rent a 800 dollars apartment in la because of my uh, my criminal background, you know, wow. and in some cities it's the same thing, you know. So people, uh, I think, uh, I think someone said, oh, Obama's looking into making some changes or trying to do some things to help people in those situations. It's, it's needed because there are so many people um, out there who have uh, strikes on the records, right. you know, and they're not trying to go back to that. But if you're trying to walk into a, into the light and people keep on reminding you of the dark, you know, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, yeah. it definitely is. Well, hopefully, yeah. people can watch the show and. You know, they can relate a lot more, have Absolutely. a little bit of open heart yeah. and just, you know, kind of put themselves in other people's situ- other Absolutely. people's shoes who are trying to struggle. Um, that's that. I, I could tell you we love Sweetie Pies. We yeah. love, you know, the family orientation of it. Like, uh-huh. you know, it's hard, you know, yeah. but, you know, sometimes it's good to go in business with family because those are the people that you can trust and you can build with and they understand where you're sure. coming from. So tell us a little about going into Los Angeles this next season, uh-huh. going, going to Los Angeles and still continuing to work with your family. And you guys, you know, you're growing. That's all you can mm-hmm. do going forward. So tell us about that. Absolutely. I, I took Charles with me on this one. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, Charles and I have had, uh, we've had, we've bumped heads uh, mm-hmm. a lot through the years, but Charles was one of the first one dying to get away from St. Louis and his parents. I mean, we, me and Charles and I are in a similar situation. We both were working with our parents. Yeah. You know? um, and Charles has a little, um, well, a lot less respect with me because he's one of the babies of the family. Mm-hmm. And um, so I think he uh, looked at his opportunity to go ahead and spread his wings and, and grow up. And he really is. He, I can say he's kind of going wild out there in L.A. <laughs> but, you know, that's what you expect. It's like he's going away in college. Yeah, he got but, them wings. Yeah, he got them wings. <laughs> but he is stepping up. He's doing a lot better. Mm-hmm. Um my mother comes out to L.A. often. You know, mm-hmm. she's in L. She's back and forth, and I'm back and forth. You know? mm-hmm. So the family's still we're trying to get together. It's just difficult. It's difficult now. We're just trying to do it in two different cities. Mm-hmm. But we're making it work. We're trying to expand on the West Coast. That's great. And then we might be coming from the East. Yes, bring it to New York, please. Bring it to New York. We definitely we love we that. The, we went to Red Rooster last night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we went to Red Rooster last night. We we always go to Sylvia, so we always checking out the spots. Yeah. We went to Billy's Blacks last night. Oh, we went man. To Harlem, so we have some nice spots out here. That's good. I'm glad you're getting yeah. your time to get through the city. Yeah. You know, future spot for another Sweetie Pies. Yeah, That'll man, be real I, good. I'll be driving down. i be driving down the street. I'm looking at all these vacant buildings. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I I'm like that. I think it's amazing, too, that from where you started, um, you can kind of say the TV show kind of helped, you know, the business expand, right? Oh, absolutely. The, um, the TV show, man, it multiplied our business. But I came, I want to, it wouldn't be fair to me say 10 times, mm-hmm. you know. The TV show was the greatest marketing uh, uh, avenue we could have ever uh, wished for. Prayer. I mean, that's nothing but God, you know. Yes. Um, so, and I tell every businessman, I mean, marketing is, I, and I had, when I came home into the restaurant, my mom really had no marketing. Street Pies was existence, but it was, it was like a little hood spot, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, people were in there, you know, it was it was the after, after church hood spot, which is great. You know, mm-hmm. A lot of those in America, but I think uh, a lot of our people don't think of ways they can market themselves, market the business to, to get other uh, other types of people into the business, right. you know. I mean, if you think about it, uh, we eat Chinese food. I mean, everyone, you know, we eat Chinese food. We eat Mexican food. Mm-hmm. We eat Ethiopian. You have a lot of different types of food. So people have to sometimes get in the box and they cater or advertise to their own people. Right, specific. If you get outside of that box, you know, you're going to get a, 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 a another dollar, you know. Mm-hmm. You're trying to get all the dollars. So right. people need to start thinking about how to market themselves in, uh, in ways they're not normally doing. You have to do different things to get different things. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I, I've also read that you're known for your, your keen business sense of mm-hmm. making deals happen. Yeah. 
<laughs> so yeah. I could kind of tell that by hearing how you're, you, it's like you're constantly thinking of how to make these things work for the better, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I didn't go to school for any of this, man. I, I think I uh, just took some things I learned uh, on, on the corner and learned mm -hmm. in prison, you know, because, you know, some of the best businessmen I ever met over in prison. True. Man, boys right now, they're the same thing. And New York got a lot of great businessmen stories, from Nicky Barnes to Frank Lewis, a lot of them, you mm -hmm. know. And those are people who, uh, we, as a culture, we kind of respect, even though they were doing negative things, you know. Mm -hmm. But if you take those same hustles and, you know, the same mindset and put it to, a, to something that's legal or something positive, the, the, it's going to be great. You mm -hmm. know, look at Jay-Z, for instance, you know, even Diddy. That's definitely true. They, mm -hmm. It's like you got to take the good from the bad to make it work for the better, yeah. pretty yeah. much. You know? Hustle is a hustle. You just sometimes you got to change the game hustling. Mm -hmm. so. Can you tell us what other philanthropic work you're working on uh, besides the entry program for Sweetie Pies? Is there any other um, organizations or programs that you guys are working with or looking to work with? Well, you know what, right now, um, I mean, everyone that reaches out to us, we, we try to help, you know, mm -hmm. by any way we can, you know. Um, but the main thing I focus on myself personally and with Sweet Pies, we've done, we, I think we've done a lot within St. Louis. Mm -hmm. and, um, in Missouri, we're one of the highest percentage of uh, employers of ex-felons in Missouri. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm trying to take this show on the road. Now I'm in L.A. doing the same thing. So I'm going to... Uh, I'm gonna do a couple more places in LA, mm -hmm. you know, and still continue to pull from our community people that you know have had a shot. Because I mean, if people don't realize, man, if you take one guy and give him a job who hasn't had a job in years, mm -hmm. and you're helping his family and everybody else that's, that's around him, mm -hmm. you know. So if we if we can like right now, I, we hired got 30 people working at the restaurant. In San, I mean, in Los Angeles, and I open, I got two more places I'm planning to open. Wow. So hopefully, with 40 years out, I have about. Now these other ones can be bigger. I still, I'm thinking I'll have around 200 employees uh, in LA uh, before the years will by the middle of next year. Mm -hmm. So that's going to help you know 200 families. Wow. So um, from there on, I'm go to another city. So I'm, I'm really focusing on people that don't have a chance, that can't get employment. That's what I go look for because those guys go hard. You know, when they get that, you get that chance. Mm -hmm. You want to go hard to you know to to prove a point. You know, you really got something to prove that hey, I can work this job. You know? Right. Wow, I think you're so. I, I mean, I don't know how many compliments you get, but you know, you you. This is very commendable work that you're doing. You're not only looking out for like these individuals, but you're looking out for their families as well. So, you know, that's definitely something that we should be hearing about a lot more. Should be on the news. The type of stuff that we're trying to do here at Inspire. Um, you know, just pretty much to close out the interview. What more can we look forward to? Uh, for the besides this new season, um, are you working on anything besides you know the TV and the business? Well, you know what um, you're gonna see in this new season. Um, I've always always had my hands in the music field, so oh, okay. um, I got mom. Uh, got another song. Got some music coming out with mom. Uh, so you can be on the lookout for a singing coming from mom. You see that around episode four or five. Uh oh. And it's not. It's not. It's not the reality TV show music. <laughs> I know we have some other shows out there, and they everybody does. Everybody's yes. rapping, producing, and singing. It's, it's not that. I promise. Mm -hmm. So you got people gonna be pleased and surprised by the product uh, that you get from mom and myself. I have some things coming out. Um, I have a single coming out with Migos. Uh oh. Uh, within the next couple of weeks here. A little hip hop, yeah, huh? Man, okay. Man, the song is live. I've been I've been writing for a while, so now I'm just uh, kind of stepping from behind um behind the board and kind of go, go hop on the mic myself a little bit while I got the opportunity. You know? That's great. Yeah. That is great. We're really excited. We're glad to have set, had this time to sit down, get to know you a little bit better, see what endeavors you have going on, and, you know, share more about, you know, the good things you've been doing for not just your community, but wherever you're placing your business community, trying to help them out. So definitely, once again, we thank you, and this is Inspire Magazine.